Hello there and welcome back to my second channel, welcome back to Jack in the Books. Today I am coming to you with a video about all of the books that I want to try and read this month. Now I also did this last month and actually it was a roaring success for like the first time ever. In the sense that normally <laughs> I'm like a mood reader, do you know what I mean? I very much pick up my next read based on how I'm feeling like. Do I want to sob? Am I looking for a love story? Am I looking for a thriller? Do I want a slow burner? You know, I try to think about how I'm feeling so that I enjoy books to their like maximum capacity. But I had exactly a month in Paris before I go traveling tomorrow. I'm heading to Cambodia tomorrow, which I'm really, really excited for, but I am doing a filming day today. So I've got loads of videos to edit on the plane. <laughs> so I'm literally spending like 20 hours here at home because the clothes that I had with me in Paris aren't really suitable for going to Cambodia in. So I've come back real quick just to basically swap out my suitcase. Um, so anyway, if you see lots of videos filmed in this room, uh, I actually was not here for very long. I'm just doing like a filming day. But my point is because I knew I was in Paris for exactly a month, I took a very specific set of books and really focused on those and told myself I wasn't allowed to buy books unless they were specifically for a video and I needed them. Which I did have to do with these two books, which I read at the beginning of this month, so I'm going to include them here. And that was The Razor's Edge and East of Eden. I managed to find this in a bookstore in Paris, uh, secondhand. But to give you an indication of how expensive English books are in Paris, this was £10 for a secondhand book. I also found a new copy, which was £24. So that probably gives you a bit of an indication into how much more expensive English books are in Paris than they are in the UK, because I definitely could have got this at my trusty local Oxfam for like £2.50 instead of £10. But it is what it is, I needed it for a video, and I also loved this book. So the first two books that I read this month were The Razor's Edge and East of Eden. These are hefty, intense books, so I've really taken my time with them to properly absorb them. But today I wanted to run through the other books that I'm hoping to get through this month. This is the book that I'm currently reading. It is A Man Called Ove. I've spoken about this loads. I'm reading it for a video that I'm doing on translated fiction and so far, I mean I'm only 24 pages in but really really enjoying it. It's very witty and it's about this grumpy cantankerous old man who is like head of neighborhood watch and he cares a lot about principle. Like that's really important to him. So he gets into little moods about things that are you know, relatively unimportant, like where the bins are put out or um, whether a bike has been left in the bike rack or not. He's a stickler for rules, but it's written with this real fondness and I'm really excited to see where this goes. I reckon, I reckon it's probably gonna make me cry at some point because it's making me laugh so far, but I feel like there's more to this than the first 24 pages have given me so far. I started reading this on my Eurostar back to London yesterday and I cannot wait to continue reading it. That is actually though one of the books that I brought to Paris that I didn't get around to and so I wanted to talk about the other three that I didn't get around to yet. The first two are fake accounts and none of this is serious. I brought these books with me because I was excited to read them and then a few people commented with kind of like bad reviews, like negative opinions of these two books and it definitely has meant that they went to the bottom of my priority list, but I still want to get around to them and make up my own mind. So I spoke about these in my previous video, so I will not waste your time. And then Cleopatra and Frankenstein is the most beautiful cover ever. Um, and I really want to get around to reading this finally this month. Some other books that I've showed you before, um, Electra by Jennifer Saint. I really loved Ariadne, which was her book before this one. And I'm going to Hay Festival at the end of May. And Jennifer Saint is actually doing a talk, which I really want to go to, but I also want to make sure that I've read Electra before I go to that so that I can, you know, really make the most of the opportunity of hearing her speak. And yes, I'm very excited to read more Greek mythology that centers female characters. Then I have been so bad with my goal to read more educational books. I really wanted to read at least one educational book a month. So far, we're in month five and I've read one. So it's not, it's not, that's not going overly well. Um, but I would really love to get around to the transgender issue this month. Um, an argument for justice. I'm really excited to read this one and learn more about it. Next, we have this book. This is Greenwich Park. This came onto my radar because my grandmother bought it for my cousin for her birthday, but then thought the blurb was so interesting that she actually bought a copy for herself and they both enjoyed it so much that I now have it too. This is like doing the rounds in my family and I kind of love that. It's like our little mini family book club, but I'm excited to read this mostly just so that I can discuss it with them, to be honest, but I will read you the blurb. When Helen, finally pregnant after years of tragedy, attends her first antenatal class, she is expecting to find her loving architect husband, her brother Rory, and his beautiful wife Serena. What she is not expecting is Rachel. 
Dun dun dun, who is Rachel? Oh, it's gonna tell me. Extroverted, brash, single mother to be Rachel, who just wants to be Helen's friend, who just wants to get to know Helen and her family, who already seems to know everything about them, every little secret. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, interesting. So it's kind of giving me stalker vibes. But I think this is set all around London and um, is described as a twisty, fast paced read. So I need that in my life, I think. And then we have these four books. These are books that I want to read for a video that I'm doing. I ran a poll on my main channel where I asked which video um, you'd want me to prioritize, which video I'm most excited about that I'm planning. And 110 thousand people voted, which by the way, <laughs> is like insane. And the most voted for video with 50% of the vote, so that is huge because there were five options, was a video on banned books. So books that have been banned all around the world um, for various reasons. And so I looked into lists of the most frequently banned books, you know, in libraries, in schools, in whole countries. And I picked from the top 10 books that all kind of were banned for different reasons because a lot of books are banned for the same reason, often because of them being sexually explicit. But I wanted to make sure that I had a real range so that they were kind of all banned for different reasons, which hopefully will make the video more interesting. And then the idea is that I'm gonna read them and give my thoughts, give a mini review, and let you know what they're about. So these are the books that I have for that video. Firstly, we have The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. I love Toni Morrison, she's got me in the palm of her hand. This is her debut novel, which immerses us in the tragic, torn lives of a poor black family. Pauline, Cholly, Sam, and Pecola in post-depression 1940s Ohio. Unlovely and unloved, Pecola prays each night for blue eyes like those of her privileged white schoolfellows. At once intimate and expansive, unsparing in its truth-telling, the bluest eye shows how the past savagely defines the present. I think this is going to be absolutely amazing. It's a book that I've wanted to read for years and years and years, and I'm intrigued about why this has been banned. So, The Bluest Eye. Next, sticking with the blue theme, All Boys Aren't Blue. This is described as an unflinching testimony that carves out space for black queer kids to be seen. Be bold and brave and queer. In this groundbreaking memoir, writer and LGBTQIA activist George M. Johnson shares their memories of growing up black and queer in America from getting their teeth kicked out by bullies at age five to their loving family relationships to their first sexual experience. These powerful stories wrestle with triumph and tragedy, weaving a rich tapestry of experiences both everyday and extraordinary. Covering topics such as gender identity, toxic masculinity, brotherhood, inequality, consent, and black joy, George's remarkable story is a story for us all, and it's described as powerful and a game changer, a balm and testimony to young readers as allies in the fight for equality. So <laughs> kind of wondering why that would be banned because that sounds really powerful and important. Oh, it's got little, it's got pictures inside. I literally just got distracted instantly, but um, I'm very excited to read that one. Next, we have Me, Earl and the Dying Girl. Now this I'm sure was made into a movie. I remember this. I think it came out just after The Fault in Our Stars, but kind of followed like similar themes, similar ideas. Um, let's find out from the blurb. My name is Greg Gaines, I'm 17, I'm the one who wrote this book. My physical appearance is unsatisfactory, and there is probably a fungus eating my brain. I'm not even sure I'm a human. Okay. Then we have Earl Jackson. He is the only friend who is even sort of my friend. We make mediocre films together. Earl is generally filled with violent rage. And then we have The Dying Girl. During my senior year, my mother forced me to become friends with a girl who had cancer. This brought about the destruction of my entire life. If you seriously want to read about that, then I guess this brain-punchingly inane book is for you. It's described as dead funny, shows just how much fun reading and writing can be. So again, not necessarily seeing why this has been so widely banned, um, and why it's one of the most frequently banned books, but... I'm gonna read it and I will let you know my thoughts on this book. And finally, this is the book that actually sparked the idea for the video because this is the most recently banned book that's kind of had a scandal around being banned. And that is The Complete Mouse. Um, let's see if there's a description, here we go. Oh, we only have reviews, there's no actual... Wow, they just said, we're not gonna give you a blurb. You, you, just, you just read it and work it out for yourself. Okay, I'll read the reviews then. Unfortunately, this writing is incredibly hard to read, so bear with me here. Mao's memorializes Spiegelman's father's experience of the Holocaust. It follows his story, frame by frame, from youth and marriage in pre-war Poland 
to imprisonment in Auschwitz. The survivor's tale that results is stark and unembellished. One of the cliches about the Holocaust is that you can't imagine it, like nuclear war. Its horror outfaces the artistic imagination. Spiegelman disproves that theory. And that's a review by The Independent. Um, the Times says, Spiegelman uh, portrays the Nazis as cats, the Jews as mice, and Poles as pigs, and the Americans as dogs. These are all terrifyingly human. Okay, interesting. So it's a graphic novel, which um, is intriguing. I do think people sometimes write off graphic novels quite unfairly because I've read some brilliant ones. We actually studied them um, at the end of the first year of my degree and it was so fascinating. So um, yes, this is kind of the book that has inspired that video. It was recently banned in um, America, I'm sure. But yes, this is the book that inspired that video. Um, I've also just seen that it won the Pulitzer Prize, so there you go. The only thing is, I <laughs> I feel like this is not the sort of thing I should read on the plane, just because of the imagery on the front, like, if you don't know what it's about, and, and it, it, it may not come across so well, you know, if I'm just sitting here reading that, like, on a flight. I probably will save this for reading in my hotel room once I arrive, but I'm gonna get cracking with these next week, and I'm excited to share loads more content with you based on these books. So thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it, hope that you maybe found a book that you might want to read as well alongside me, and reviews will be coming soon. Massive shout out to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. All the best, stay in touch, have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time. Bye bye!